All right, so let's go ahead and get started, folks. Um, thank you all for coming. This panel uh, discussion is on All Together Now, uh, open source project, uh, cross-project collaboration. Um, it's a discussion that's been coming up um, relatively frequently, uh, particularly more recently, uh, with a variety of projects needing things from other projects. Uh, we really hope that this is a true discussion amongst uh, the audience and, and the audience and the panelists. Um, we really want to hear your thoughts, your experiences in this area. Uh, we're certainly going to share uh, some of the experiences and the projects that are represented up here um, uh, through the panel. My name is Phil Robb. I help to manage the Open Daylight community. Uh, and again, we've been working with a variety of projects uh, around the, the SDN space. Uh, and, and, a, and a good piece of that also ties up into OpenStack, hence the, uh, why it's relative here. Uh, but I want to start off with each of the panelists kind of describing, you know, introducing themselves, obviously, describing what project they work on, as well as what has worked for them uh, in doing cross-project collaboration, meaning that, you know, what have other projects asked these guys to do? What have they asked other projects to do? What's that interface looked like? What's worked well there? Um, and what could use improvement? Again, as we continue to build out deeper and richer open source ecosystems, that bring together multiple pieces of open source and multiple projects, getting to do this better uh, is just, you know, goodness for everybody. So with that, um, Justin, would you uh, go ahead and start? Sure. So I'm uh, Justin Pettit. I work on the Open vSwitch and uh, OVN projects. Uh, OVN is a new project that we started in, or we announced in January and started coding to provide uh, virtual networking uh, for OVS. And I think most people are probably familiar with, uh, with Open vSwitch. Uh, you know, historically, we're sort of at the bottom of the stack on Open vSwitch, and so we get some requests coming in, uh, especially around documentation. There's been a lot of uh, complaints about how complex OVS is. Uh, so that's, you know, that's where a lot of the, the requests have been coming for us. Uh, for when we, we mostly need to work with the only people who are below us, which is the kernel. So occasionally we need to deal with the kernel community to ask uh, for features there. But now with the OVN project, we'll be uh, dealing a lot more with uh, other communities because we'll need to integrate with people like Open Daylight and, and uh, OpenStack. Great, thanks. Colin? Uh, so I'm Colin Dixon. I'm the chair of the technical steering committee for Open Daylight, um, which basically means that I have no power and a lot of responsibility, which is a lot of fun. Um, uh, and I'm also the person who, you know, Chris Price comes and yells at what it is that we're not delivering things to OPNFV. Um, so, but, but we, and we, are, we interact with pretty much every open source project in this space. Um, I think we haven't actually started integrating with OVN yet, but um, my guess is that if Kyle is, ever gets four seconds to code again, that will be the first four seconds of code that he writes. Um, but we interact with OVS, and in general, we actually haven't had very many requests of OVS. It's mostly just sort of worked pretty well, but that, I think OVS is a pretty stable project at this point in time. Um, and fortunately, we, we had pretty good experts. Um, but we sort of work, but we work with, you know, OVS, OPNFV, um, OpenStack, um, uh, and just pretty much everything else in between. And my experience about what's worked well is when there are actual humans that sit in both camps that have cycles to write code. Um, and what works badly is everything but that. Um, uh, so, uh, um, uh, you know, and, and having Kyle Mestri has, you know, sort of interact with Open Daylight and OpenStack has helped a lot with the Neutron integration. Um, and um, I mean, other things that have been hard have been language barriers. We can sort of get into that later, but, but yeah. Cool. Very good. Okay. Chris? Um, I'm Chris Price. I work with the OPNFV project. Uh, we're a relatively immature project. Well, not immature. We're a new project. It's <laughs> <laughs> a different word. Um, <laughs> Slightly immature as well. Uh, no, we, we are basically a consuming project. We are an open source collaborative activity that doesn't intend to write any open source software. We are a midstream activity. So we, we consume and we build out. We are targeting the NFV uh, technology domain. So we're trying to essentially establish a platform uh, that can be used in the NFV domain uh, using uh, OpenStack, Open Daylight, uh, OVS, Linux, KVM, you name it. Uh, generally, a, a what we hope to provide is a stack that serves the telecommunications market. Um, for us, collaboration um, upstream is extremely important. Uh, and to, just to echo Colin, the best collaborations we've had is when our devs have sat down with other devs and we've just solved problems. Um, collaborations that, well, 
Still, we're very young. I can say, I can, <laughs> we're, we're just, we're, we're finding our feet. Um, yeah. That's my introduction. I'll hand over to Dave. Hi, uh, I'm Dave Lenro, and uh, I'm sitting in on this panel for Kyle, who was going to play the role of the deep OpenStack expert. Uh, in front of a lot of audiences, I would try to fake it and pretend to be that guy, but this is not the place to try to fake it. Uh, the reason I'm relevant on this panel is because is I think I'm one of the few people in the industry whose really full-time job is to try to work across a large number of different open source projects and standards organizations and kind of try to herd things in the, in the same general direction. And while not necessarily deeply involved in the coding piece of it, I'd, I'd echo uh, you know, what Colin and Chris said, which is that you, know, you need to have the same people in all of the conversations at some point, or you end up with completely different conversations in every organization. And the chances of the pieces looking similar and coming together are, are pretty near zero. So I think we've got to somehow transition from a, a history where we were siloed and that made things more efficient and focused and whatever, and it was good to kind of ignore other projects. We got to get into this mentality of paying attention to other projects and talking to them and you know, showing up. Very good, very good. Um, and again, so I want to make sure that everybody is totally open. If you guys have questions at all, please just come stand up at the mic and I, I will constantly be deferring to folks in the audience. Um, for any questions or comments that you want to make in this domain. Um, and if I continue to get nobody standing up there or raising their hand, then I will continue to pelt questions. <laughs> <coughs> I defer the floor Dave, to Margaret. Dave said something that got me think Okay, so I hear the, uh, I, I understand the value proposition of trying to have the same people going to all these things. The problem is there's a lot of things. So you have Open Contrail, you have Onus. You have Open Daylight, you have DVDK, you have OVN, you have, I mean, y you can't go to all these things. Um, and in the networking industry, we're getting so, f I think, so fragmented. Um, and as a consumer of this, I guess, uh, uh, I, I'm actually, for those who don't know me, I'm Margaret Kios from at and um, It's daunt daunting, it is really daunting. And um, so since we, as a consumer of this, can't go to all these things, we end up going online, looking at etherpads, looking at things like that. But um, as everyone knows, what you see in writing and what's really happening is very, very different. Um, so it's very daunting. Uh, so that's why I really, th I don't know how, but um, I mean, what's the suggestion of all these factions and trying to get them uh, either have less factions and working together with a different faction or, I don't know, getting everyone to really work together. Well, you know, I think uh, clearly we can't have a huge number of individuals who all go to 47 different open source projects and participate heavily. But if instead of having thousands of people who only participate in one, everybody participated in, say, two, for example, you could end up with permutations and combinations such that you, you did have kind of a coherent thread between the entire community across the communities. Uh, the networking I, guy is suggesting a mesh across the... <laughs> full mesh. <laughs> so, I mean, this is going to be another networking suggestion, but, you know, we, 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 these projects fit into a layering. Um, and, if, and if you are mostly concerned with consuming one at the top layer, you can... It, you, you don't have to necessarily build relationships the whole way down to the bottom. Yes, I mean, right, I mean, right, you don't have to, I mean, if you're consuming open daylight to get network virtualization, you don't have to talk to, you know, necessarily to Justin and OVS because we're maintaining that relationship or if we're not, it's sort of, you know, our problem and you can ask us. And then similarly, you don't have to worry about the kernel so much if, you know, then Justin's going to take care of that, in a, that relationship. And so, um, when it's that kind of path, for instance, say OPNFV to Open Daylight and OVS and the Linux kernel and all the way down, that seems like it's that's that's how you scale. You have hierarchy, right? You, you try and get to the point where you actually care about it. You interact at that point, and maybe one or two points below where it matters. Um, but but it certainly is still a considerable amount of time, and I think that that's part of the trade-off which we're seeing in terms of engaging with open source projects. If you, if, you, if you don't want to give more time to understanding how open source projects work, you're unlikely to get more value out of the open source projects than you would have gotten out of a vendor product. Um, it's, a, it's not a free lunch, it's sort of a, a new spectrum of trade-offs that you can make as you acquire technology. 
And Chris, being the, the representative of OPNFV and particularly those various components, what, what are the things that your organization is trying to do to build those bridges with those organizations? Are you taking that hierarchical approach? Do you feel you're able to take that hierarchical approach? Or do you feel as though you need to actually interface with those groups independently now and possibly help them build bridges amongst each other? I mean, what are your thoughts and what's OPNFV been trying to do there as a young project? Yeah, I, I think Colin has a good point from from a, a what do I want to get from this perspective. You can you can you can go to a certain level of abstraction or, or a certain level of depth to, to find the level that you want to get things from. As as OPNFV as a project, we're, we're a little more operational, so we're actually running and, and trying to deploy. Um, we have projects like vSwitch performance evaluation projects, which are going to essentially hammer vSwitching and, and try and figure out how to improve it. Um, if, if you come to OPNFV and you're interested in vSwitching, that's a great thing to do, but it doesn't necessarily solve the problem for, for uh, Margaret and, and others to come in and really understand, okay, what is OPNFV doing? Well, vSwitching vSwitch, is an important component of the platform. Having high performance is an important aspect of, uh, of, of what we want to deliver as part of the platform, so we, we kind of have to dig in. Um, and in order to achieve that, we need actually a broad spectrum of individuals in the project. Um, it's it's uh, we have engineers that are here at OpenStack, working with the OpenStack community and focused on how we can get uh, features and functions and how we can best leverage OpenStack in what we're trying to do. Uh, we have people that will work with the, with the vSwitching team to try and achieve the same thing. Um, and we try and create a holistic view, I guess, to some extent, um, at least f for targeting the NFV space. We're not trying to boil the ocean and solve everything for everyone. But from an NFV perspective, we kind of know what workloads we want to carry. We kind of know what types of deployments we have. So it's, it's a little easier for us to, to then sort of go down into the stack because we know what it is we want from the different levels of the stack. Um, but then if you start to look at enterprise, uh, that, then don't come to OPNFV. Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. You could always come to OPNFV, but it, it, it may be that the expertise or the type of workload analysis you're looking for is not what we're focused on. Um, but really, as, as we mentioned before, it's about getting engineers on the ground. We may think, oh, we need better performance from OVS. Can we send them a mail and ask for it? That doesn't really help. Um, so we start a performance activity and we start to evaluate it. We start to say, okay, these are where we're seeing problems. And then we'll have engineers engaging with the OVS team and saying, we're having problems here. We, we really need to figure out a solution. Um, and that's the way we're going to approach everything. Um, we we want to figure out what the best way to do stuff in OpenStack is. So we don't come to OpenStack and say, hey, can you write this code for us? <laughs> we, we, we come and we say, okay, we have a problem. Can you help us find the solution? And, and that's really how we're trying to approach everything. And it's the engineers talking to each other about how to solve this problem that's going to bring us forward. Right, yeah, and, th and that's the kind of you know, advice that's very helpful when we're dealing with somebody. So it's not just you know, the, the getting traffic in out of the VM is, is too slow for us. You know, it's like reproducing the use cases, and then we can actually then try and, uh, and uh, recreate it ourselves and give us, you know, you know, we can try and find the specific problems. And, uh, you know, and, and this is obviously a, a space that we're working on quite a bit because this is, um, uh, the, the, the network performance now has become so important, and there are different trade-offs uh, for uh, getting traffic, for example, out of in and out of VMs. Because in the NFV case, you may trust the VMs, uh, and so that you can just do direct memory copies. Whereas traditionally, when when we've deployed VMs, it's been in an environment where people don't trust the the tenants because they're they're selling you know CPU CPU time, and so it really it, it's. Uh, you know, there's sort of new areas that we're having to explore, and so having these sort of interactions is really important to understand how new use cases are evolving. And so uh, this week, there was an interesting meeting between the OPNFV uh, community and the telco working group within uh, OpenStack, and, and one of the good things that came out of the discussion was there was a sense that uh, the OPNFV folks would not be successful if what they did was came and prescribed the solution and the technical implementation. You know, what we really heard from those guys was we want to hear what the problem is and what you need functionally and, you know, sort of quantitatively we need to get from A to B, not change this line of code and re-implement this. And, you know, if we can tell them what we want rather than how to do it, the relationship can work a lot more smoothly because we give them the latitude to do things that make sense in the overall architecture and community where, where they kind of understand uh, why something might be the wrong way to do it that wouldn't be obvious to somebody that, that you know, is from an outside community. Repeatable, sorry, repeatable automated high-level tests are the greatest single idea 
that the software development industry has had possibly ever. Um, and and that, so, so that's another thing about how to interact with other communities and how to make this work is, you know, don't bring me a, a written piece of text about I like, tried to do X, like bring me a script and, and better yet, like a script that runs and has a description of what its dependencies are and it could actually run in my CI. That's like, I, and I, I realize that's like in two orders magnitude war work, but not only does it actually fix the problem, but it keeps the problem fixed for the rest of time. Very good. Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> a couple of quick comments, and, and I'm, I'm not a developer, and, and I'm, I'm, I come from a networking infrastructure vendor position, right? And, and knowing where networking is compared to other components of this industry, right, and how it's very dominated by a couple of major vendors, which is very different than most of the other components of this, right? Uh, Looking at what happened and why these other industries change and where they are, where they are now versus networking, I think a big part of it was the leadership that Linux provided, right? And, and knowing how this progresses against the bigger vendors, unless somebody provides this leadership and writes this code, and even if it is initially the wrong direction, right? Once there is an alternative and we learn from it and we move back and and even if we need to rewrite it at a what point of time, I think it's very hard to move the ship away from every vendor trying to differentiate themselves and, hey, we provide the right solution sort of approach, right? So, and, and this is where I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess, focusing on the open NFV as the, the lead to take us down this path. Because if we, do, and I appreciate that you don't want to in, get involved in writing the code and solving the problems yourself, right? I, I totally understand that. But I struggle, who would, right? Yeah, uh, to comment, I guess, maybe, maybe I misrepresented, but I mean, we, we don't intend, what we don't intend to do is write the code in OPNFV. We, we intend to engage in other communities and help them write the code. We don't just throw papers at them and things. We, we intend to bring developers and solve this problem. So from, from that perspective, when it, when it comes to creating the platform, we, we intend to come with developers and we intend to come with problem statements um, we don't imprint, uh, and I guess the difference is we don't intend to come with blocks of code we want you to implement or copy into your repos, and we don't intend to come with papers that we expect you to follow. We, we intend to collaborate and develop, um, and then pull that back into our platform. And, and one of the challenges we have in OpenNV is, is okay, when are the features coming? Well, the features are coming after we've come and talked to OpenStack and got the implementation, and then pulled it back downstream, and then managed to integrate it across the platform. So, so our feature development cycle is ridiculously long. Well, not ridiculously long. It is, it is realistically long. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it's, and, it's, and it's one of those situations. And, and one of the things you mentioned also, Linux provided leadership. Linux provided leadership by providing a common foundation that allows differentiation. Uh, and that's something that, that in OPNV we want to enable vendors also to differentiate, but to provide that common foundation for them to do so. And I think that's really important. Uh, but, but I think also there's been quite a bit of innovation lately in, uh, in, in networking. I, mean, I think historically that was certainly true. But with SDN, I mean, not that it's fulfilled all the promises that it made, but I, I do think that there is much more programmability in the network than there used to be. And so there are a number of open source projects that are, that are providing that. Thanks to Nicira, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, the, the, the last comment, and I didn't mean it has to be on NFV, yeah. open NFV. It could be the telcos. And I, honestly, I'm looking for the AT&Ts and the Verizons and the NTTs to do that, right? Well, because and again, there, there isn't a difference between that there's not an us and a them. It's all us now. So that's there, the whole point. The, so there's, I mean, just, I mean, there's 2.3 million lines of code in open daylight repos, which... Uh, I, I can dip, I can either argue is it an asset or a liability depending on the day, but but um but you know it, it, we we are writing non-trivial quantities of code to try and solve real problems and provide a platform for people to deploy networking functionality into their networks in as open and vendor neutral a way as we can figure out to do, um, and so I think you know I, I mean. The Linux Foundation always yells at me because I don't make this analogy, but you know, we really are trying to build Linux for networking, um, and there's a lot of people trying to push that down the hill. So I think, I think you're exactly right that we need it, and we're trying. I don't know if we're going to be the most successful project in the world at it. I, I certainly hope so, and I, and I put a lot of my life and my in sort of my time and my lack of sleep and uh, <laughs> in, into trying to push us there, and, and, I, and I think that we're going to get there, but th that's exactly what we're trying to do. So I don't think it's for lack of... Um, it's not like people don't understand that's what we need to be doing and aren't trying to do it. Um, and, and so you should, I, I encourage you to come to Open Daylight and see what we're doing and, and figure out if we're meeting what you would like or not. 
I'm looking for the gift, too, by the way. Very good. Okay. Yeah, yes, thanks. I'm, I'm Brian for AT&T. So the thing, I think the thing that Chris said about the um, differentiation, right, is, is a key point because what we're seeing, uh, and I think this is to Margaret's comment, is that, you know, uh, the desire to differentiate results in solving the same problem 10 different ways in 10 different communities and just basically provides an environment for fragmentation. You know, I think as, as a... You know, as a midstream community, OPNV at, at least should try to encourage consolidation, uh, try to encourage a common open source solution space where people can plug in their differentiators in their products if they want to, but, but stop trying to solve the same problem 10 times. Because talk about even if we didn't deliver a line of code, right, we're going to deliver tests, like you said. We're going to define what we want and we're going, to we're going to make sure it works, right? And if we have to do this in 10 different communities, we still have the same scalability problem. Any comments so, from the panelists before <laughs> Margaret goes? No, no, no one wants to buy on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I would also love for there to be fewer, you know, fragmentation, but, you know, that's a... Mm. a, a, a and there, there are strong economic incentives that are driving a variety of actors, many of whom I try and negotiate with and help. And I think actually we've done a better job than the people on stage are, are, are actually responsible for a much smaller number of viable alternatives than you would have gotten if the, if, if the four of us hadn't been there. And that doesn't mean that it's enough, but I think that, you know, we understand it and we're trying. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you want one open source solution, I mean, I think, how long did it take for Linux to be the open source operating system? Mm, there would um, be many in the community that would argue that it's not. <laughs> right? and, and that's, and I guess my only point that I would make, Brian, is that that particular problem is not one that open source as a concept has solved very well either. I mean, I used to give presentations where I would say, if it's worth doing once in open source, it's worth doing 10 times. <laughs> because there would be 10 different implementations, and when we still have that, right? It is the case that, though often, there will be a coalesce over time to something that is you know, dominant, as Linux is, right? And so that I don't know that, as far as an open source construct, we can hope for much more than that. And particularly in NFV and SDN both, they're new, they're disruptive, there's lots of ideas about how this might work. And the benefit of that is there are lots of people scurrying off in varying directions trying things, and that's great for technology, you know, work through, but it, particularly for those trying to use in the early days, that's why it's called the bleeding edge, right? So, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so I, I think one of the hardest things we have to do in, in OPNFE and in, in any of these communities is sort of find the right balance between diversity and freedom and making some choices. You know, if, if we don't do any curation, you end up with a bag of stuff and it's not a platform and you can't build an ecosystem around it. Um, at the same time, if you anoint winners too early, you don't allow some of the evolution and Darwinism to play out. And I don't think any of us in any of these organizations have exactly dialed that in perfectly, but most of what we're trying to do at the leadership level is, is find that line between freedom and curating. So I still struggle with um, the development and code issue of where do you do it? Um, the reason why OPNFE was created is because I got the impression there's a sense of um, frustration that when you're an open stack, it's so huge and it started in a certain market and now you have this other market that is huge um, that's not getting enough attention or, or, or not understanding the true needs. Um, and as this industry and the networking industry is pivoting, Right, we're all sort of all over the place, so that was one of the values of why we want to get OPNFE together, so we're not all coming up with our own little ways of doing it 5,000 times, um, that we could hopefully do it in a more collaborative environment. And this is the only, OPNFE is the only environment where networking people and the users of networks can get together to figure out how to do this. Um, so saying that, I, you know, I, I find it, maybe it's because you know, people say certain short phrases and you walk away thinking what they meant. But um, I don't know if Paul Carver's here. Um, Paul Carver from AT&T and I were in one of these um, Neutron um, meetings. And we sort of started discussing about how important it is for OpenStack to start, I mean, we didn't quite say it this way, but I would say it this way, is you know, getting their act together because 
um, we're going to we're starting to build a lot of our businesses on this, which is a lot of money riding on it. And that it's important that the organization tries to help us um, to, uh, to address our needs. So we sort of got attacked. I mean, I wouldn't say sort of. We got attacked. And one one gentleman said that you know, well, you know, you had the super user Comcast that you know submitted whatever thirty six thousand or whatever that lines of code. And you know, if you really want, you know, whatever, you should bring all your developers there. Um, and then so we got into so the discussion of you know, participating directly and also bringing code. <laughs> so that's why I find it interesting because I was in some of those discussions where they said, you know, work with us on the blueprint. D don't come up with pre uh, a preconceived notion of how to work it and uh, let's work it as a community. The problem though is they don't understand, they, not all, right? There's a, there's a set of folks that don't understand networking. Their view is what is wrong with, you know, VXLAN, what's wrong with lands. I mean, I mean what, what's the big deal? Why are you guys, you know, we've got, you know, whoever of the world having millions of users, why can't you guys just get on that bandwagon? So that's why I struggle with, you know, working with them. I mean, of course you have to try, but you get to a point like, if they don't understand, how do you move the ball forward as they keep discussing and arguing like, no, 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 we have a better way of doing it than you. Yeah. I, I, can, I can respond to that, I guess. Um, the so there will always be people, open source, is, open source is great because it's a place for many people to come with many different backgrounds, many desires and many needs. Um, OpenStack is a great example of that. You, you could almost argue too many, but, but that's really part of the, the, the wonder of participating in OpenStack. Um, and there will be people that don't care about what you want. It's as simple as that. Uh, I think it's, it's the community's responsibility to be accommodating of multiple needs. Um, if there is someone that doesn't care about something you're doing, well, that's fine. They shouldn't necessarily say it's wrong unless they take the time to understand it and then are able to articulate why it's wrong. Uh, and that's, it's, it's a culture that you need in any open source community, any open source project, is it, acceptance and understanding is, is the two main foundations for how you actually go about doing things in those communities. Um, and as we know, um, when the pressure hits, acceptance starts to struggle and you don't have time for understanding and so then you get into fun conversations which generally end up in red faces and uh, but this this is natural and this is normal and it's part of the bonding experience because you come out two weeks later you're a little bit embarrassed and you actually have the conversation um, but that's part of learning and part of new people engaging in these teams i mean every one of these projects is a team and we all know how teams work forming storming norming so on and so forth and in open source communi communities Norming is, is one of those long-term things which you may actually never really get to. You're just forming and storming and, and just moving forwards. And you norm amongst the people that are interested in what you're doing. Um, but I, I guess it's a response, it's not an answer. It's, it's, this is a fact of the open source community. And this is, this is for, for, for us uh, in OPNFV who are telco-centric, we need to be aware that we're addressing communities that there are components of them that don't really care. Um, and, and that's okay. We accept that. As long as they can accept that we do care, we're happy. And that's, I think, the, the, the line we try and find. So do you believe, do, I mean, do, so knowing, that, knowing the key, I guess the leaders, if I call them that, on, on OpenStack, and then of course we know the, the folks going on the networking, do you believe that at least the leaders or the PTLs or whatever you want to call them, um, have the right skill set, if I call it that? to really appreciate what we're trying to do and to actually work with us on something that is accommodating versus uh, not. What does our open stack expert think about that? <laughs> 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 you know, we, we. Over to you, well, Ben. I'm really asking the, I'm asking the non-open stack uh, folks to do so, judgment on the people so, who are so, here, so, I guess. You know. so, so Kyle is probably yeah. the nicest and most willing to sit down and listen, and also technically capable of understanding diverse needs, humans that I've ever met. So like, it would, sh it would surprise me, I mean, and, 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 although the, and the implication at the beginning of the question was that Kyle disagreed with your approach. Um, it would, that would surprise me, um, and certainly, I, you know, and, and there's lots of us in the community that, that, that know Kyle pretty well, and we're happy to sit down and figure out if, if there's things that need, need to shift. I will say that if, and, and, and um, trying, if you approach consuming an open source project like OpenStack, the way that you appro approach buying, you know, like you know, buying support for Windows, um, it, 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 it will blow up on you. 
Uh, no, I mean, and, and you know that, but I mean, so, but there is, but I mean, somebody, somebody has to sit down and, so somebody has to sit down and write the code, and if it's not going to be AT&T, then it needs to be um, a customer of AT&T, or, or, or AT&T, or, you know, or, I mean, some, some set of developers need to begin to understand what your needs are, and start to code to those needs. And where those developers come from is an interesting question. I think that there's a whole bunch of people in OPNFV who um, a variety of your customers have decided are, uh, you know, oh yeah, vendors, sorry. Um, well, um, um, but like, I mean, that's, um, but so, so I mean, this is somebody needs to write, the, somebody needs to end up writing the code and showing up with a set of demands and without uh, uh, some cogent plan of where the code is, where the people that are going to write the code come from. I'm not talking about code. People are actually more important than code um, uh, <laughs> um, because they're capable of reasoning about and solving problems and, and, and getting decisions made about conflicting code. But, that, but without that, it's hard. I can sort of, I understand the frustration that might have come up in that meeting. Let's just put it that way. Because uh, I, I get a lot of people that come and ask for things in open daylight. Like, I want OpenFlow 1.4 support. And, and I say, great. I do too. <laughs> uh, 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 but I need warm bodies, right? I mean, like, and, and, I'm, and I will do everything in my power to get those warm bodies on the right track, connected with the right people, um, helping them unbreak Jenkins at two in the morning. I will do anything it takes, but I, but I, but you know, it's that I, there needs to be somebody with a vested interest who's going to sit down and actually do the work, um, and, and figuring out where that comes from. And in essentially in the networking space in open source is something which we're just doing now. And I think that we're, that more than the technical things is what's causing the friction that, that I think everybody is seeing. Um, so we're gonna work it out, but it's gonna take time. Yeah, I think that the introduction of the telco industry into OpenStack and the creation of OPNFV are all an, an, inter an interesting introduction of a new culture into the OpenStack community, right? And part of this is um, getting through the impedance mismatch between those cultures, right? A vendor-centric, you know, vendor is going to supply me type of, of culture versus an open source culture. Again, uh, focused more around cloud data center than the needs of, 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 of a large telco operator, right, are separate. Um, and so part of it is, as these gentlemen have said, you know, you get developers working across those communities so that that impedance mismatch can be, can be worked through and the dialogue can actually be productive as opposed to not really understanding. And, and to borrow a networking paradigm, you know, you're conservative in what you say and you're liberal in what you accept. But right? before, before we pivot, I, I just want to actually directly answer the question. I, I, I have found the PTLs and the core members from OpenStack that I have, I have interacted with to be both highly competent and collaborative and open for discussion. I found some that haven't really cared about what we're doing, but they're willing to listen. So I think, yes, we have some, some very good people here. As, as a direct answer to the question, question that we did avoid answering for some reason. <laughs> I, I started with talking about you did, Kyle. You talked about Kyle. <laughs> so uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Colin, that uh, re request for OpenFlow 1.4 support sounds very familiar uh, uh, to me at the, uh, the Open vSwitch project. <laughs> and uh, the, the answer I always give is, uh, is, is when, when you show up with patches to edit, we'll be happy to take it. Uh, I, I mean, that, that's kind of the answer to any feature request. Uh, we, we always love to have things so that are new. Uh, but so uh, w one of the things that has kind of surprised me at this conference is uh, any number of people have come up to me and said, so uh, how, how can OVN and Open Daylight work together? What, what, are some, uh, uh, w what are some points of collaboration? It's not something I thought about much, and I, I wondered if, if you or anyone else on the panel had, had some thoughts. Well, I mean, I, I think, I mean, this was an obvious question that came up when we announced the OVN project. And, uh, you know, I think we can, you know, m my answer to, you know, oh, is this completely duplicating the effort is no, not really. I, mean, I think that there's something that needs to manage OVN. OVN is, is controlling the, the OVSs and I think doing a good job or will do a good job at um, creating virtual networks and adding new features. Um, but we're not a CMS, we're a cloud management system. We're not um, providing the, you know, there's, we're going to, you know, we're low level guys. So if you love making database calls, sure, you can configure OVN, but most people aren't going to do that. And so, you know, whether it's OpenStack or, um, uh, or Open Daylight, that's, that's managing that, I think, makes a ton of sense. And it's actually, there's, you know, th I think there's some precedent for, uh, for Open Daylight, not just acting as an open flow controller. I think that's pretty much that on, which is that um, um, most traditional SDN controllers were basically a control plane replacement. 
Um, Open Daylight is a control management and orchestration plane replacement, which is at times a really terrible idea. But, but also sort of, I mean, I think we're at a point in IT where we're, one of the really interesting questions about SDN and the broader thing we're doing in IT right now is what happens, what would happen if we merged all the layers together for a brief period of time to figure out if we drew the layers in the right place 40 years ago and it's still correct? or if we would relayer them. And I think if we end up the other side of that and we have the same layers we had before, to some extent this whole experiment will have been a failure, but I, I don't think that's a significant risk. Well, I, I think we've already abandoned the layering that we used for you know, 40 years when we went into cloud. The problem is we haven't replaced it with any, you know, in, in yes. networking in the OSI model, we were very good at calling layer violation because the layers were clear. Now it's not at all clear where those and, and, layers and, are and, or what the hierarchy is. And, and so I think that, you know, one way, you would, I mean, so, so OVN is pretty clearly, you know, sort of just below the management plane providing really a control plane. And so you can imagine using OVN to do a bunch of the control plane features that are in Open Daylight. But the truth, the truth of the matter is most of what Open Daylight does these days is actually more of a management and orchestration plane. Um, with the exception of OpenFlow, control, we tend to stay away from the control plane because the interfaces that we have are actually to control planes when you're outside of that. And so I, th I think there, there's a very natural way that OVN would be another sort of southbound way to control as much of your network as you can. You can also imagine using Open Daylight to bridge OVN onto other things. I mean, you want to advertise routes using BGP based on what OVN is configured, great. Uh, you can do that with you know, some relatively minimal amount of code inside of Open Daylight. Yeah, very good. As we, as we talk about how to actually introduce um, new features, right, be it new features requests, uh, I'm making the assumption that people who are bringing these requests have engineers that are able to actually work on this. So with that assumption, you know, granted, there's one way to do it in OpenStack. It's actually still somewhat undefined in Open Daylight. I'm not quite sure what it looks like in, in, in Open vSwitch. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, both the necessity for that process within each of the projects, and is there any cross-collaboration that can be done across projects such that the same types of information and the same types of milestone intersection points exist across those, those, those projects so that those that are actually looking to uh, interact with multiple projects to build something can do it more successfully? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a swing at this because this is pretty much the first thing we found when we started our project. It, and we it, said, it was a soft pitch totally for you, Chris. Yeah. Yes, please. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so how do you work upstream with, with so many projects that do things so differently? Um, yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> let us know. It's, it's, yeah, we'll let you know. Actually, we, we have, so in, in OPNFB, what we decided was um, there is no answer. There is just action. Um, so we, we established what we called uh, community groups. So we have a group of people that are focused on working with OpenStack and what, what they do is they work with the OpenStack community and we have OpenStack community members, community members coming into OPNFV to sort of help facilitate this where we learn how to interact with the community effectively. Uh, and each community has to be governed in its own way because it's made up of a certain class of people who have a history, who have evolved to where they are from, from, uh, uh, from, from some, hi from some place to where they are and they still have a view of where they're going um, and none of the projects are the same none of the projects have the same maturity and you really have to be able to engage and we talked about engineer to engineer it's it's critical the, the, everything else is really just a way of framing the discussion between the engineers at the end of the day if you can have any process you like but if you don't have engineers flowing through that process and having engineers communicating back in the other direction you're never really going to get anywhere open-minded engineers Open, well, yeah, as open-minded as you can get them, yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's a real challenge. There is no cookie cutter. You really have to have a group of people that understand the community you're engaging with um, and are able then to articulate that community's needs back to ours so that we understand what we need to do in order to engage well with them. So. So my, my experience has been that almost every project that you're interested in interacting with has meetings um, that are open. And if you show up to the meetings for a couple of weeks without talking, you'll get a pretty good idea of what you should be doing once you start talking. And when you start talking, people will actually participate and interact with you. And, and that, like, if, if, you, if you spend a couple of weeks trying to get to know the feel of the community you're trying to get involved in, it usually doesn't seem near, it usually works. But basically, if you show up and you're not an asshole, it, it tends to work. Um, uh, and, if it, and if it doesn't in open daylight, come find me and, and I, will, I will figure out how to make it work. And I think that's probably true for the rest of the people on stage and their projects and, and I'm sure other people in the audience who um, uh, have their own 
uh, areas that they work in, but usually there's somebody, you know, feel free to reach out to me or anybody else in Open Daylight, feel free to reach out to Chris and OPNFV, and, and we'll make sure that you find the right people and you can engage in the right places. Very good. Thomas, my apologies, we're, we're actually out of time. No All right, but folks, thank you very, very much for uh, participating, and uh, please uh, help me in uh, thanking the panelists. <laughs>